Hi guys, welcome back to the next section, Backend with .NET Core. Here we will build our very own set of APIs to exchange JSON data between a server-side ASP.NET Core controller and a client-side Angular component. Let us begin this section with the video Dataflow. As you might already know, a native web app following the single-page application approach will roughly handle the client-server communication as shown. In our specific scenario, the index.html role is covered by the views index.cshtml view file that is returned by the index action method within the home controller. However, the base concept is still the same. In case you're wondering about what these async data requests actually are, the answer is simple, everything, as long as it needs to retrieve data from the server, which is something that most of the common user interactions will normally do. The preceding picture shows, in a nutshell, what we will do, define and implement a pattern to serve these JSON-based server-side responses, our application will need to handle the upcoming requests. We consider the master plan we put down in the previous section, ready. We can already define most of the entries we will need. We'll definitely have quizzes, which will be the main entities of our application. They will contain one or more questions, each one with a list of answers and a number of possible results. Eventually, we'll most likely add users to the loop. Before moving ahead, let's take a more detailed look at what happens between any of these data requests issued by the client and the JSON responses sent out by the server, that is, what's usually called the request response flow. As we can see, in order to respond to any client-issued data request, we need to set up a server-side controller featuring read and write data capability using the data access layer. Organize these data in a suitable JSON serializable view model. Serialize the view model and send it to the client as a response. Based on these points, we can easily conclude that the view model is the key item here. That's not always correct. It could or couldn't be the case depending on the project we're building. To better clarify that, before going ahead, we should definitely spend a couple of words on the view model object itself. We all know that a view model is a container type class that represents only the data we want to display on our web page. In any standard MVC based ASP.NET application, the view model is instantiated by the controller in response to a GET request using the data fetched from the model. Once built, the view model is passed to the view, where it is used to populate the page contents input fields. The main reason for building a view model instead of directly passing the model entities is that it only represents the data that we want to use and nothing else. All the unnecessary properties that are in the model domain object will be left out, keeping the data transfer as lightweight as possible. Another advantage is the additional security it gives, since we can protect any field from being serialized and passed through the HTTP channel. Now that we have a clear vision of the request response flow and its main actors, we can start building something. ASP.NET MVC at least once, we already know that the most straightforward way to do that is to create a dedicated controller for each entry type. However, before adding each one of them, it can be wise to create the corresponding view model so that it can handle the entry data in a strongly typed fashion. Wait a minute. Why are we starting with the view model if we don't have a data model in place? Where will we get data from? Such questions are anything but trivial and deserve a concise explanation before going further. One of the biggest advantages of building a web application using ASP.NET and Angular is that we can start writing our code without worrying too much about data sources. This is not a requirement either. We're also free to start with our data source for a number of good reasons, such as the following. We already have a clear idea of what we'll need. We already have our entity sets or a defined populated data structure to work with. We're used to starting with the data, then moving to the GUI. All the reasons are perfectly fine. We won't ever get fired for doing that. Yet, the chance to start with the front end might help us a lot if we're still unsure about how your application will look, either in terms of GUI and or data. In building the application, we'll take advantage of that. Hence, why we will start playing with our quiz view model 
even if we don't have its data source and entity class yet. From Solution Explorer, right-click on the Test Maker Free Web App node and create a new folder and name it View Models. Once done, right-click on that newly added folder and select Class Option. Call it Quiz View Model and click on to have it added. Once done, replace the new file's namespaces with these new ones and then replace the file's sample contents we define in a public class. Then, define the properties of the model, the int types, flags, user ID and public view. As you can see, this is basically a POCO object with a rather common set of general-purpose properties. Our quiz will have a title, a description and so on. There are still some missing things, such as the aforementioned questions, answers and results, but these will come later on. Let's move on to Quiz Controller. From Solution Explorer, open the Controllers folder. Right click on the folder and select the usual Add and then select Class. Ensure not to use the Add Controller option available there, as it will activate a wizard like feature that will also add some dependencies to our project, which is something we definitely don't need yet. From the ASP.NET Core, Web Tree View node, Select Web API Controller class. Call the new file Quiz Controller and click on OK to have it added along with the already existing Home Controller and Sample Data Controller files. The controller will be created with a bunch of sample methods, which we'll not use. Delete the entire file contents and replace it with this new code. Here we first add the namespace and then the code. Let's take a quick look at the code to see what we've done. As you can see, we started defining the latest method, accepting a single, optional integer parameter value called num, which defaults to 10. The method accepts any GET request using the custom routing rules configured via the HTTP GET attribute. This approach is called attribute routing, and we'll be digging into it further later. For now, let's stick to the code inside the method itself. The behavior is really simple, since we don't yet have a data source. We're basically returning a couple of sample quiz view model objects. It's also worth noting that we're using a JSON results return type, which is the best thing we can do as long as we're working with view model classes featuring the JSON objects attribute provided by the newtonsoft.json framework. That's definitely better than returning plain string or I innumerable string types as it will automatically take care of serializing the outcome and setting the appropriate response headers. Before going further, let's take the chance to implement two more action methods to the quiz controller to emulate a couple of different retrieval strategies, getting the quizzes in alphabetical order and in a completely random fashion. First, we will look at the by title method. Go right after the latest method and add the block of code. As you can see, this internally calls the latest method itself, which actually just returns some sample quizzes created on the fly and outputs them in alphabetical order. Now we will add the code for random method using the same technique. Let's try our controller by running our app in debug mode. In order to test it, we need to manually type the URL in the browser's address bar. If we did everything correctly, it will show something like this. Our first controller is up and running. Do not underestimate it. Eventually, it will be in charge of all quiz-related operations within our web application. 